All right, we're in 4.2, and we are going to be talking about the unit circle. It's just a handy little uh, tool. Um, so remember that if we have a, a point on the plane, just like that, then uh, if we were to draw a line to it and call that R, excuse me, I need a pen, call that R, uh, and this is the point x comma y. Then we have the uh, sine is the sine of this angle right here uh, is just y over r, and then the cosine is x over r, and uh, you can take the tangent of that angle is y over x. Um, here's the idea of the unit circle. It's called the unit circle because the radius, and now I have to actually delete just that. Uh, now the radius we're going to say is always 1. Right, so if we trace out the circle that has a radius of 1, let me do my best job at that. Okay, so that's supposed to look like a circle, a circle with a radius of 1. When we plot all the points on here, so that all the points are at these, uh, are off at these common angles, like this one, if we say this one is 30, um, like we'll grab red and we'll say this is 30 degrees, then what we get here is the x, uh, x over 1 will be the cosine, x over r r being 1, then just the x value will be the cosine. Um, we went through that process to find the cosine of 30. We know the cosine is um, root 3 over 2. And we know that the, uh, we can see here that if the radius is 1, then the sine of the angle that has a, it's on a circle with a radius of 1, then uh, the y value of that point is just the sine. So the sine goes here in, in the place of the y value. So root 3 over 2 comma 1 half is, uh, is the location of this point, and it's also the cosine uh, and the sine of 30. So we can, uh, we can do this for all of those common angles and everything uh, it just gets plotted on this circle, and it's pretty nice and convenient. So here we could do 45 and 60. Um, we could keep going around the circle, and I'll just use black for this. I think this is black. Uh, we can do the mirror images of these. This could be 120. This can be 135. This can be 150, 180, and we can go 30 degrees down off the horizontal, then 45, then 60 degrees down from the horizontal. Uh, we can do the mirror image of all those. And we talked about reference angles and, and all that kind of stuff too, and, um, and we made brief reference that, um, let's see, that, um, this point over here, this this angle over here, is going to have, uh, in this instance, 60 as a reference angle, and so it'll have all the same uh, sine and, and cosine, or at least the same coordinates, um, um, still the same sine and cosine. Uh, as 60 degrees, only the, the x part of it will be negative, and the y part will still be positive. So the cosine will be negative, and the sine will be positive. So we, if we go around here realizing that, hey, that first coordinate is just going to be the cosine. That's what's going to go in the first one. This is, we know from previous videos, that this is root 2 over 2. This is root 2 over 2 as well, the sine. Um, get green here. Um, this one, the cosine of 60 degrees is uh, 1 half. And the sine is root 3 over 2, just the reverse of 30 degrees. Um, and here we can now, uh, realizing the, the scheme here, 
the, the cosine and the sine of 90 degrees. Um, that's, that point right there is right on the y-axis, so it would be at 0, 1. So the cosine of 90 is 0, and the sine of 90 is 1. Um, and if we come over here, now we can see that this would also have a sine of root 3 over 2, uh, but that its cosine would be negative 1 half. This guy here would have a, uh, a cosine of negative root 2 over 2 and a sine of positive root 2 over 2. And here we have a cosine of negative root 3 over 2 and a sine of 1 half. Okay. And then we can completely fill this in and we have the unit circle with every common angle, multiples of 30, 45, 60, or 90. Uh, all the way around the circle, and just using that uh, that property of the, you know, just basically the mirror images. Uh, for example, uh, for 30 degrees, we have already found that the cosine is root three over two, and the sine is one half. If we go way over here, directly across mirror image, uh, so that we're 30 degrees above the horizontal, just in the second quadrant, then we know the x value is going to be the same, only negative. So negative root three over two instead of root three over two, but still positive one half. Um, down here, if we are 60 degrees off of the um, off the horizontal, then we know we're going to have 60 degrees as the reference point. We can see that this point right here is just as far to the left as this point. This point is to the right. Right. This is one half to the right. One half. So the cosine is, of 60 is one half. So the cosine of 240 degrees, or 4 pi over 5 radians, is negative one half. And the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. That's the y value here. And so the y value at this point, um, you know, just a total flip uh, around the origin, we have a, uh, a sine of negative root 3 over 2. And we can see just by, the, just by flipping it over the y and the x-axis that that's exactly what we should have. Okay, so we, we pick these specific angles, the multiples of 30, 45, 60, and 90, and we uh, insert all of the... Uh, the the coordinates of the points that are on the circle uh, and at these strategic uh, angles. And what we wind up with is the x value is the cosine of the angle we're looking at, and the y is the sine of the angle we're looking at. Um, and you can copy this down. Um, I'll give you a, a copy to fill in in class, uh, but it's a handy tool to have and to look at and once you recognize or, or once you memorize this first quadrant and then recognize that, uh, that all the other angles can be found just by flipping that first quadrant uh, over the y-axis, over the x-axis, over both, uh, that we can find easily the sine and the cosine of these, these common angles that get used quite a bit. Um, also, what you'll see, um, remember that going in... Uh, this direction is positive, and down this direction is negative, so counterclockwise and clockwise. Clockwise is negative. Um, for instance, uh, this 30 degrees here, and this is negative 30 degrees here, so 30 degrees and negative 30 degrees have the same this, right? Root 3 over 2, the same x value, okay? So that's the cosine, the cosine. Uh, of 30 degrees is equal to the cosine of negative 30 degrees. Um, so there are these uh, certain properties. That one, this first one we've just expressed that um, the cosine of a, of some of some angle is the same as the cosine of the negative of that angle. So it's the same as the cosine of the negative of that angle. Um, how about the sine of an angle? Well, here is uh, 30 degrees, and right here's 30 degrees, and here's negative 30 degrees. How does the, the sine compare? Well, they're the same, only one of them is negative. So the sine of an angle is equal to the negative of the sine of negative. Hmm. So the sine of an angle is equal to the 
opposite of the sine of the opposite of the angle. So for 30 degrees, the sine is positive 1 half. And the sine of negative 30 degrees is negative 1 half. So if you, if you know the sine of this angle of 30 degrees, uh, then you know the sine of negative 30 degrees. If you know the sine of 60 degrees, you know the sine of negative 60 degrees. If the sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, then the sine of negative 60 degrees is negative root 3 over 2. Okay. Um, also, what you can see here is that every sine and every cosine could be found uh, you know, if we if we drew this line here and, and knew what angle that was, we could find every sine, every cosine, every tangent, every secant, cosecant, and cotangent as well. Um, so you'll see, like, take the sine, for instance. We start out with a sine of 0. It gets slightly bigger, 1 half, root 2 over 2, slightly bigger, root 3 over 2. We go all the way up to a sine of 1, and then we come back down, right? That y value maxes out at 1, and we come down here at 0 again, come down here, Negative one, that's the, the the smallest that it gets, right? Going all the way down to negative one and coming back up. And if I go past three hundred and sixty degrees, it doesn't matter. I just come back around, I have a sign of one, I have a sign of negative one, a sign of one, it's just around and around and around the circle. We'll keep seeing the same values of sign uh, turn up. <clears throat> so you'll go through these these uh, this full gamut of of, uh, of values of sign. It'll go from zero to one to zero, negative one to zero, and it starts over again. Uh, and and the, 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 quote, time that it takes uh, is to go all the way around uh, a full rotation of the circle. And once you go a full rotation, then you start over again. You see this uh, cyclic nature, or what we call a periodic nature. Okay. Um, just picking a color here. So sine and cosine... Um, Sine and cosine are what we call periodic. Because what we could say is that the sine of x is equal to the sine of t, where we'll let t be uh, something between 0 and 360, or 0 and 2 pi, if we're talking in radians, uh, plus uh, just the period of of the function, of the, of the sine function. The period is, how often does it repeat? It repeats every 2 pi. We're going to start transitioning into radians. It, it, it starts to repeat every 2 pi radians. So 2 pi is the period for sine. The same is true, excuse me, is true for cosine. The cosine of any angle, you could put it in terms of, actually we should, I, I should uh, erase that and kind of change it just a little bit. Um, not just 2 pi. Maybe, we, maybe we'll have to go around several times uh, to get to the angle that we're talking about. You know, if this is 100 pi, then you're not just going to go around one revolution. You're going to start at, uh, let's say you're at 34 pi over 6. Right. Well, a pi over 6 is, is like 30 degrees. So here's a pi over 6, another pi over 6, pi over 6. We could go around by pi over 6 uh, all day long. So 34 pi over 6 is going to be many times around the circle uh, and then finally landing back on, on one of those uh, original um, angles. Right? Maybe it's, it's pi over 6 or maybe it's 5 pi over 6. But it'll land on one of those pi over 6s. Um, so we'll say 2 times some integer, right? This, is, this represents multiple revolutions around the circle. Maybe one revolution, two revolutions, three revolutions, uh, but it'll go a certain number of revolutions. You'll start at, say, pi over 6, go around a bunch and bunch of times, uh, you know, multiple revolutions, maybe it'll go once or twice or three times or four times, um, but eventually you'll come back around and it'll be equal to whatever angle you're looking for. So it's what we call periodic. Okay. Um, those are the, the main points that we want to cover. Um, we just want to get out of it mostly the unit circle. Um, we use the unit circle. I'll use the unit circle, reference it many, many times to talk about um, things we observe about the sine and the cosine. So we definitely want to have it and be familiar with it. So um, there it is. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.